All right, our next topic we're going to discuss is the equations of lines and planes in space. So first thing, let's kind of review what we know about the cross product. So the definition of the cross product is that's the determinant of this three by three matrix. Now the geometric kind of definition and interpretation is that the absolute value of the cross product gives us the area of the parallelogram formed by vectors u and v. So let's go ahead and draw that. Let's kind of say, okay, so I've got vector u here. I've got vector v here. And sure enough, they kind of form a parallelogram. All right. And so that parallelogram also kind of gives us a plane that can expand out in any direction by adding together scalar multiples of those two vectors. You can get to any point on that plane, um, delving into linear algebra territory there. Uh, the direction of the cross product is, so that brings us to our third point here, and the direction of the cross product is going to be perpendicular to u and v. Thus, it's perpendicular to the plane formed by u and v. So let's draw a picture of that. Okay, so u is here, and v is here, and then, well, what do we got? u and v generate this kind of great big plane by adding together multiples of u and v. You can get to any point on this plane. And now if you take the cross product of, the, of these two things, what you get is some new vector, u cross v. And that happens to be perpendicular to both the u, v, and u. And that necessarily guarantees that it has to be uh, perpendicular in general to our plane generated by u and v. Okay, so that's a little bit of a review there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna now take a look at planes in space first. We'll look at lines in space later, and we'll look at some applications. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and derive uh, the equation of planes in space as an application of the cross product and the dot product. In particular, the combination of the two kind of in the form of the box product. So recall that the box product, the, the absolute value of the box product gave the volume of the parallel pipette that was generated by the three vectors involved, u cross v um, dotted with w. This should be here, not in there. Again, apologies for the typo. The yeah, absolute value of the determinant of that matrix. So let's pause and think about that. Uh, well, not that, but rather think about a plane. So a plane, any plane in space, just like in, uh, oh no, we're gonna use, in the x, y, I don't wanna use the word plane in two meanings here. So we're gonna call it the x, y grid. In the x, y grid, any two points define a line. In x, y, z space, any three points that are not on the same line, non-collinear points, define a plane. And we would like a condition such that a point is on this plane. Okay, so that's what we're searching for. So what we could do is if you have three points that are non-collinear, they're not in the same line, then you could find U and V. And just like what we saw on the last slide, from there you can generate a normal to that plane and uh, you can kind of generate a plane from U and V. So let W be a vector from any arbitrary point to any point that's already on our plane. Well, you got u and v, and so you may as well use some of those points, but together, u, v, and w, if you plotted them in, um, in their position vector versions, they would form a parallel pipette. So the question we need to answer is, is the vector w on our plane? Because w goes from a point on the plane to uh, a point, an arbitrary point. And so if w is on our plane, that would say that our arbitrary point is also on our plane. So is W on our plane? U and V are necessarily on the plane. W might be, we don't know if it is or not. Um, and the condition that we could use to guarantee that is, is the parallel a pipette that they form flat? I think this is the last bullet point for this slide. Oh, nope, it's not. There we go, okay. I wanna try and draw a little picture here. So. The question we could ask to determine whether W is on the plane is, is the parallelepiped that they form flat? Um, well, 
if they're in the same plane, that would give us a flat parallelopiped and a flat three-dimensional object has volume zero. Okay, so let's draw this. Uh, kind of back to our picture from the last one. I'll kind of draw two little sketches here. Okay, so we've got um, U and V that are generating this plane or two vectors on this plane. And let's see, I'm gonna say that point W, since you don't have a good, we're drawing three dimensions flat, this is not on our plane. So not on plane. So, and this vector here goes to the point W that is not on our plane. Well, in that case, we would have ourselves a nice three dimensional Parallelopiped, it's going to necessarily have volume. And if we took the box product of these three vectors, we would get a number that is not zero because we would get a volume for that uh, parallelopiped. However, if it is, is on the plane, if our arbitrary point is on our plane, then our picture would look like this. So we'd have U here and V here. And then this point over here is on our plane. And so yeah. And so this be vector w. If you were to form a parallelopiped of the uh, involving these, you would get something that doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense, okay? So we got this. And we got that connected there, but then the height of this thing is going to be defined as kind of the height that goes up to something that's already on there. It's really hard to draw a flat parallelopiped. The point is that this thing is flat. And if it's flat, it doesn't have any volume. And so the result of the box product should be zero. And that's the condition that we need, that we found a condition to guarantee whether a point is on the plane or not. So the setup for planes in space is that you need two vectors, any two vectors. And from any two vectors, you can create a plane. We know that u cross v, if you have two vectors on the same plane, gives you a normal vector to that plane. So we'll call that n, n is equal to u cross v. And let w is a vector from a point on the plane, p0, to an arbitrary point, p. And w would be the vector from initial point, p0, to point, p, arbitrary. And the following are equivalent. If u, v, and w, uh, the parallelopiped has volume of zero, it's a flat parallelopiped, then u, v, and w are on the same plane that we saw in our, our sketch on the last slide. And so if the box product is equal to zero, the volume will necessarily be zero, and those three vectors will be on the plane, and that will ensure that our arbitrary point p is on the plane. Or with alternative notation, mention the setup above, the dot product of n and the vector p0 to p is equal to zero, which ensures that n and p0 to p are orthogonal, if and only if p0 and p are in the plane. Because remember, n, we do, what we just did was we replaced u cross v with n because n is equal to u cross v. So the box product, when you do that, becomes the normal of a plane dotted with a vector from a point on the plane p0 to another point uh, p will be on the plane if the dot product of these is zero. So we expand these ideas to get an easier, quote, easier to work with equation for the plane. If p0 is x0, y0, uh, z0 is on the plane, and n is the normal ai plus bj plus ck, that's a normal to the plane, and p is equal to xyz is any point, then the equation of planes in the space, the dot product equation, the normal dotted with a vector, p0 to p is equal to zero, leads us to the component equation of a times x minus x0 plus b times y minus y0 plus c times z minus z0 equals zero. And then since x0, y0, and z0 are all numbers, you can algebra that into shape and end up with uh, having that all equal to some constant d, uh, leaving all your variables on the left like we like to do. So here's the following is a nice concrete method you can follow to make this happen. So to find the equation of a plane containing u and v, you find the normal. So the normal is given by u cross v. And that normal 
is going to always be written as AI plus BJ plus CK once you've done the math of the cross product. The X component is capital A, the Y component is capital B, the Z component is capital C. Find a point on the plane, P0 uh, is equal to X0, Y0, C0. Well, if U and V are on the plane, uh, you probably know a point on the plane, so you may as well just use that one. And then you just whack it into the component equation of the plane and you've got yourself the solution. So here's an example. Find the equation of a plane containing the point P0 is equal to negative 307 with normal 5, 2, negative 1. Well, we're given the normal, so we don't need to do a bunch of work here. And remember, the normal is notationally uh, A, comma, B, comma, C. Whoops. OK, so filling in the blanks here, we're just going to go ahead and plug 5 in for A, 2 in for B, negative 1 in for C. And then I'm left with one highlighter here. So go ahead and fill in your values of your point there. And you've got yourself your equation once you can, and that you can then algebra into shape. And I see that I've missed a parenthesis here. Uh, apologies. So that's not too bad if you're given a normal and a point on the plane. Uh, so the challenge it becomes when you're not given a normal and a point on the plane, you have to first find your normal. So let's say you're given an, uh, three points. They're listed there as 0, 1, 1, or, um, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 3, 0. Well, we need to calculate a normal. And so we'll pick P0 to be the initial point for all of these, and we'll calculate U and V as P0 to P1 and P0 to P2, respectively. Then we can take the cross product of u and v to get our normal vector, giving us 3, 2, and 6. Now we need to find a point on the plane. Well, we're given three points on the plane, so we could pick any one of them. But as you can maybe see, spoiler alert down below, I chose just to use b0, 0, 0, 0 1. And so now I'm going to substitute into the formula that we have. Again, reminder that our normal here is a comma b comma c. Uh, substituting in for a, b, and c, you got three, two, and six. Substituting in for our point uh, coordinates, x0, y0, and z0, you got zero, zero, and negative one respectively, or I'm sorry, positive one respectively. And then you can algebra that all into shape and get 3x plus 2y plus 6z is equal to 6. So let's go ahead and visit a example graph here. All right, as we're waiting for this to load here, get that little guy out of the way. Okay, so now what have we got? We got P0, P1, and P2. Notice they're all in the axes just because of the way I chose the uh, points, but you can hopefully see that that generates a nice plane there. And then we take the cross product of those U and V, and we get this vector N, which is, I think, very clearly normal to our plane. Notice vector N, I didn't bother to plot it from a point on our plane. It's always going to plot as a position vector, so at the origin, but you can still see that it's normal and orthogonal to the plane. I think. And then from there, we can see that plugging in the values we got is how I plotted the plane. OK, so back to our slides. Don't need to save that, no. All right, next. So now that we've talked about planes, it's time to, the title of the lecture was Planes in, and Lines in Space. So now it's time to talk about lines in space. Uh oh, don't freeze on me little computer. OK, so let's take a review of lines in two space. So this line L, I'm naming the line L, uh, review of lines in two space, line L is going to be y minus 1 is equal to 1 half x times the quantity x minus 1. Algebra it into shape, and you've got y is equal to 1 half x plus 1. still here? I'm going to go ahead and pause this.